Chapter 3 Daji enters the palace. Chung Ho Hu and his wounded son fled for their lives the whole night through. Gathering the remnants of his troops, Chung was deeply grieved to find that only one tenth of his men were left, most of them severely wounded. General Huang Yongji came forward to offer him comfort. Why are you so full of worries again, Grand Duke? I still hold that victory and defeat are commonplace events in a general's life. Though we were defeated last night, we can still gather new forces. He urged Chong. Why not send an urgent dispatch to the West Grand Duke and request reinforcements as soon as possible, so that we may continue our combat and seek our revenge? What do you think? Chong Ho Hu pondered a while. Since the West Grand Duke takes no action while we've suffered defeat and seems indifferent as to whether we win or lose, I'm reluctant to ask him for help. He said, lest he be acquitted of the crime of disobeying His Majesty's orders. As the discussion went on, a report was delivered. A huge army is marching towards us at great speed. Not knowing where the army was coming from, or whether it was friendly or hostile, Chung Ho Hu became scared. He hurriedly mounted his horse, and looking ahead wildly, saw a general with a face black as the bottom of a cauldron, a red beard and round golden eyes. He was wearing a coronet embroidered with clouds, flames, and flying birds, a suit of mail, and a bright red robe. He was riding a fiery-eyed monster, and held two golden axes in his hands. Chung Ho Hu soon realized that this was none other than his own younger brother, Chung Hei Hu, the Black Tiger, the Marquis of Caozhou. This new arrival set Chung Ho Hu's heart at ease. After exchanging greetings, Black Tiger said, when I learned that you had suffered defeat on the front, I rushed here with my army to help you. How good it is to be with you once again. Chung Ying Biao saluted his uncle from his saddle. You must be tired after marching so far. He asked his uncle with concern. But Black Tiger Chung Hei Hu only replied. My army will join yours under one command. Let's go back to Jizhou and see what we can do there. Chung Hei Hu had brought 3,000 flying tiger soldiers with him, and there were another 20,000 following later on. The two armies marched to Jizhou, encamped and prepared themselves for battle. Meanwhile, in Jizhou, Su Hu had heard about the arrival of Chung Hei Hu. He lowered his head and remained silent for a long time. Black tigers highly skilled in combat and learned in the art of war. There's no rival for him among the generals in this city. He finally said and asked his generals. What shall we do? Generals are accustomed to fighting against invading armies, just as earth is commonly used to cover water. We mustn't be timid before Black Tiger. Su Chongzhong commented. You're too young and inexperienced. Don't you know that Black Tiger Chung Hei Hu was tutored by a magician? He can chop off the head of a great general as easily as pulling something out of a bag. Su Hu warned. You mustn't underestimate him. Father. By praising the enemy, you're only compromising yourself. Su Chun Zhong replied. I'll meet the challenge at once and not return until I capture Black Tiger. You'll suffer from your mistakes and soon regret what you've done. Su Hu warned again. Despite these warnings, Su Chunzhong leapt upon his horse and galloped out of the city, shouting, Tell Black Tiger to come out and fight at once. Hearing the report, Black Tiger was secretly glad. I'm here first to avenge my brother's defeat and second to try to save Su Hu. He thought, I must help him for friendship's sake. Before the camp, Black Tiger watched Su Chunzhong display his martial skills and called to him, Dear nephew, go back and tell your father to come and see me. I've something important to tell him. But Su Chengzhong was young and uncultured and longed to engage in combat with Black Tiger because his father had praised him as a brave fighter. He did not take the cue. We're enemies, though my father was friends with you. You had better leave this place at once, lest you lose your life. He shouted back. How dare you speak so rudely to me, you little beast!
black tiger cursed him furiously and lunged forward with his gold axes at Su's face. Su met the blows with his halberd. Thus began a fierce combat between the two heroic generals. Su Chunzhong did not know that since his childhood Black Tiger had been the disciple of a mystical sage, who had given him a magic gourd, which he always carried on his back and enabled him to perform miracles. But Su Chunzhong had only his bravery to rely on and looked with contempt upon anyone who chose to fight with short-handled axes. He exerted every effort to fulfill his ambition of taking Black Tiger alive. Their violent combat caused Black Tiger to perspire all over. He said to himself, I admire Su Hu for having such a good son. A brave general's son must certainly be a brave general. He made a feint with his axes, pulled his horse around, and fled. Su Chongzhong laughed at his cowardice and urged his horse after him. Seeing that his enemy was unwilling to give up, Black Tiger stealthily removed the lid from his gourd and began to mutter incantations under his breath. Suddenly a stream of black smoke rushed out of the gourd, filling the sky, and a flock of heavenly eagles could be heard calling loudly as they flew back and forth. The eagles opened their iron beaks and swooped down to peck at Su Chen Zhong. He tried to defend himself with his halberd, but he could not protect his horse at the same time. When one of his horse's eyes was pecked out, the horse fell. Su was thrown onto the ground and taken captive by Black Tiger. When Su Chongzhong was brought before Cheng Ho Hu, he did not beg for mercy, but continued cursing and swearing. Cheng Ho Hu lost patience with him and ordered the executioners to behead him at once. But Black Tiger saved him, suggesting that he be escorted to the capital and dealt with personally by the king. Hearing the bad news, Su Hu groaned to himself. What can I say now? My son didn't listen to my warning, and as a result was taken captive today. I've been a hero all my life, but now my son's been taken captive, and with such a strong enemy, Jijo's bound to be taken before long. Why have I ended up in such a miserable situation? He wondered to himself. Is it because I've given birth to a daughter? The bloody king's been deluded by the minions, and demands her as a concubine. Because of my refusal, my family and the innocent citizens of this city shall meet their ends. The disasters due solely to her, my daughter. It will be my greatest humiliation if the city's taken and my wife and daughter are sent to Jauga as prisoners. They would be tried and put to death and their corpses would be displayed in the market. I would certainly be ridiculed and despised by all the marquises in the kingdom. I'll be a greater hero if I kill them first and then put myself to the sword. Thus thinking, he took his sword and rushed to the rear palace. When Daji saw him, she ran up and greeted him with a sweet smile. Dear Papa, why do you come here with your sword in hand? How could Su Hu possibly raise his sword against Daji? She was his beloved daughter, not an enemy in battle. He broke into tears. My darling daughter. Because of you, your elder brother has been taken captive. Because of you, this city is surrounded at this very moment. Because of you, your parents shall lose their lives. Because of you, our entire family will perish. But before he could finish, a challenge from Black Tiger was reported, and he immediately returned to the court. He held a conference with his staff. Since Black Tiger's skilled in witchcraft, we mustn't answer his challenge. He remarked. We had better defend the city wall with arrows, stones, and rolling logs. At the foot of the city wall, Black Tiger was also confused. Brother, if only you would only consult with me, I could withdraw my troops. Why do you fear and refuse to see me? I don't understand. He had to return to the camp. Chung Ho Hu suggested that they attack the city with tall ladders, but Black Tiger had a better idea. There's no need to launch an attack. Let's rather surround the city and block their supply lines. They'll be left inside without anything to eat, and we can take the city without an effort. Besides, we can rest now while waiting for the arrival of the West Grand Duke. Su Hu was thus hopelessly besieged. One day, it was reported to him that General Zheng Lun had brought in provisions, 
and was waiting outside for further orders. Though we've got rice now, what use is it? He sighed, then said. Tell him to come in. When Zheng Luang came in, Su Hu described the whole situation to him. No one can beat Black Tiger since he's both brave and skilled in magic. He concluded. There's no one that I can turn to for help in the whole kingdom. There are four in my family, but my son's already been taken captive. I've decided to kill my wife and my daughter first and then myself. Otherwise, we'll be ridiculed by the future generations. You generals may as well pack up and find yourselves a new master. Marquis. Are you drunk? Are you mad? Or are you possessed? Even if the other three dukes and all the 800 Marquises joined forces, I wouldn't even glance at them. How can you be so cowardly? Zheng said in anger. I've been in your service since my youth and owe my present position to you. I'll always do my best for you. I see that General Zheng's been possessed by an evil sprite, and that's why he's speaking nothing but nonsense. Su Hu declared to his other generals. Let's forget about the 800 Marquises for now. But this black tiger alone is a headache. Tutored by a sage in magic arts, he's a source of alarm to both gods and demons. He's also a great strategist and can stand up to 10,000 men without fear. You mustn't underestimate him. Let me go and fight him. If I can't take Black Tiger, I'll have my head cut off and presented to all the generals assembled here. Zheng shouted.